Joining us from Rio as well is Lisa Delpi Nirati with Georgia Washington University. She's an Olympic scholar and professor of sports management and marketing. So Lisa, first week is over. Ups and downs, security issues, of course, the green pool. Overall, how do you think things went? Well, it all depends on who you speak to. The Brazilians and the South Americans think this is one of the best organized events that they've had in this part of the world. If you'll talk to the Americans and the Europeans, you know, there's some mixed feelings about that. Uh, there's some difficulties with food and transportation. So, but that's part of the Olympics. I mean, that's why we like the Olympics to move around the world. Um, people are learning more about event management. Um, for the Americans and Europeans, I think we're adjusting to the culture of maybe we, you know, we're so uptight and we have to have everything perfect. And, you know, it's more laissez-faire here, you know. They're, they're still putting up signs, directional signs. They're still fixing some things. But, you know, the play is excellent. The competition is great. And that's what we're really here for. So if we wait a little bit longer in queues and our food's not so great, that's not the end of the world because what we're here for is the athletes and cheering them on. And speaking of the athletes, China and U.S. leading in the medal count. That is not a big surprise, but there have been other surprises, like the one our reporter Joel Richards was just telling us with the U.S. women's soccer or football team. Yeah, that was a big shocker. I mean, they just won the World Cup. They were expected to go all the way to the finals. And, I mean, that also affects the business. There's a lot of hotel rooms that were filled because of that. Um, so, you know, it's not only disappointing, but I know it's disappointing on the, the business side of the Olympics as well. Lisa, so many stories of resilience, hope, inspiration. And for the first time at this Olympic, we saw um, a refugee team. Anyone in particular that stands out to you? For me, it's been the Syrian, um, the young Syrian swimmer. You know, the Olympic Games are about bringing people together. And just because countries can't be competing or they don't have the opportunity, I think it's great that the International Olympic Committee offered this opportunity for athletes around the world. And I think all of them are special. And yes, the Syrian is, is you know, taking some news. But I think we should give credit to all of them that came here to compete. You're absolutely right about that. All right, let's talk about some um, some not so great things. Four athletes suspended. China, an athlete from China, from Poland, from Bulgaria, um, sanctioned for doping. And of course, this follows uh, Russian allegations. How much has the doping perhaps overshadowed this, these games? Has it at all? You know, once you're here, you don't hear that much about it because everybody's so busy going to competitions. But leading up to it, as you know, the whole Russian controversy was, you know, really on people's mind. And I know it was a very difficult decision for the International Olympic Committee. Uh, on one stance, you know, they have a, they say no drugs. Uh, and you know that drugs were doping was happening in Russia. But do you ban a big country like that from the Olympic movement and competing in the games? And then, you know, what people don't understand is the International Olympic Committee is finally catching up to the medical world on testing for, for drugs. And I think it's just going to be a cleaner sport going forward because the technology that the International Olympic Committee is getting is uh, more advanced. In the past, they've been about two to five years behind what the drug manufacturers, but they've made a partnership with drug manufacturers so they know just as fast as the doctors that are giving these drugs to athletes. Uh, so I think uh, in the future, we'll hopefully have less people taking drugs. Well, we certainly hope so. And Lisa, what are the hopes and expectations for this coming week? Well, I really think the organization will smooth out a little bit. It was rough at the beginning. Uh, the Brazilians have really, uh, ticket sales have gone up. They're selling about 100,000 tickets a day now. Uh, they're at 86% of the tickets sold, which is, you know, huge for down here. 
uh, pa surpassed the expectations at this point. So I, I just see it getting better and better as we go through. Well, that's a good way to end our segment. Lisa Delpy Narati in Rio. Thank you so much.